Hawks. Let's meet the starting goaltenders, brought to you by Tim Hortons, the official copy of the NHL. Despite spending time in Los Angeles, Ben Scrivens has never faced the Anaheim Ducks in his career until tonight. And at the other end, 32-year-old Jonas Hiller got his 29th win of the season Wednesday in Calgary. Hiller 2-0 against the Edmonton Oilers this year, and a huge game for Anaheim. An opportunity for them to take over the lead in the Pacific Division. The Oilers have three games against Anaheim down the stretch. They're going to try and spoil that party. And it starts tonight. Gagne, Hall, and Perron up front. And this is Taylor Hall with the puck. Tied for 18th in the NHL in points. He's got 67 on the season. He got a goal and an assist in the game Tuesday against the San Jose Sharks. He has the puck right now. Trying to get it back to the point. Nick Benino cut it off. But Nino is the lucky dog who gets to play with Getzlaff and Perry tonight. Bagnan centers to Benino. Gives it to Getzlaff. Gets it back and he scores. It pays off right away for Nick Benino. 35 seconds into the game, it's one to nothing. I'll tell you what a year Nick Benino's having, Kevin. 46 points now in the season. That's his 19th goal. Talk about a breakout season for him. And as you mentioned, playing on the big line tonight as Bruce Boudreau shuffling things around and just a broken play that goes to the net. I thought this was one pass too many by Benino, but I guess I was wrong because he gets it back and shelves it for a one nothing lead and not the start Edmonton wanted, but goes to show you the passing capabilities of that top line of Anaheim. They converge and bury it. Ryan Getzlaff now has 80 points on the season. And Sammy Vatanen gets the other assist. He's got four points in his last three games and a quick strike for the Anaheim Ducks here at Rexall. And they have had a lot of success lately against the owners here in this building. They have not lost in the last 11 meetings here in Edmonton. They have a longest streak against the Oilers as far as teams coming in and winning on home ice against Edmonton. And the Anaheim Ducks looking to make it 12 in a row here at Rexall Place. And obviously off to a great start. And that's one of those ones you have to shake off early, immediately in the game in the first minute, get back to action. And I actually like the fact that early on the top line of Edmonton got a puck in deep. They almost got it back twice and created a chance. It was Benino with a defensive play that got the puck out of the zone. As Louie mentioned, Nick Benito with 19 goals on the season, a career here high in goals, assists, and points, and right off the bat, Daniel Winnick and Matt Hendricks dropped the gloves. Winnick did not play in the game Wednesday. He was a healthy scratch. He's back in the lineup, and Matt Hendricks. And Winnick's a sneaky, tough guy. He can scrap. Not afraid to drop the gloves, has long arms. Hendricks always game. Two guys in tight right now trying to get loose. And now Hendricks has the left hand, and he scores twice before Winnick takes him to the ice. Well, Matt Hendricks got that left hand free and scored a couple of blows, and he is trying to fire up his bench as he has a conversation with the Oilers. He is the vocal guy on this team. Yeah, no question. After a quick goal like that, Anaheim scores. Matt Hendricks goes out, tries to engage, gets a guy that doesn't fight too often, and Daniel Winnick to drop the gloves. That's what you like to see, trying to get some motivation for his bench. Let's take a look at the keys of the game, brought to you by the 2014 Ford Super Duty. It's built for tough. Well, we talked to Dallas Aikens a little bit this morning, and he said from now on in, eliminating the big mistake, trying not to make that game breaking mistake that's going to decide the game. The little ones you can live with, but don't make the big one. And for the Anaheim Ducks, we talked about secondary scoring, shuffling the lineup column for Bruce Boudreaux, looking for that depth in scoring heading into the playoffs. They want to get production from everyone. An extra roughing minor, you know, the Edmonton Oilers being served by Jordan Everly. So the first power play of this game will go to the Ducks. And here is Hendricks. Trying to fire up his bench and it cost him. Lindholm will give it to Perry. Perry fires a shot and there is Scriven making the save. Maroon wants the handle and it is set down the ice by Jeff Beecher. The Anaheim Ducks for a team that has gotten 101 points as a surprisingly mediocre special teams. They have the third fewest power play goals on the road of any team in the National Hockey League. A power play that is ranked 24th away from the pond. Opportunity now for Gordon, moving in shorthanded. Gordon's trying to get a shot away, couldn't do it. Gets left back defensively. Gets a little help there from Matthew Perot. The Ducks were one for two in that win over Calgary on Wednesday, but they have not scored a power play goal in the season series against the Oilers so far. This is their 11th chance with a man advantage. 
Lynn Moe brings it in. He'll give it to Perry. Get it right back again. He is checked immediately by Martin Marincic. Gave it away. Here's Perot back to the point. Gets left waiting for it there. He'll snap it over to Hampus Lindholm. Lindholm gets it back to the captain. Gets left with a wrist shot through traffic. And Scrivens makes the save. And he had big Patrick Maroon right in his face. Little zipper there by Ryan Getzlaff getting it through the traffic. Great screen in front. Watch Maroon. And I'll tell you what, Maroon's a big customer. 6'4", 225. This is where he plants himself on the power play. Very difficult for a goalie to see around him. But you see Scrivens, once he has the, the lane, once he has the vision, he stays there, finds the puck, and makes the save. Gordon stays out there. He's joined by Ryan Smith. Then Smith will send it down past Francois Beauchemin. Vladimir back to pick it up. 34 seconds left to go. And the first power play of this hockey game. And as soon the Ducks strike just 35 seconds in. Jonas Hiller, ninth in the league in wins. He's got 29 on the season. Vladimir brings it up slowly. Fires it in the opposite corner. Scriven covers that up with the legend right on the doorstep. Yeah, and you look at the power play of the Anaheim Ducks, you would expect them just to be lights out. And they are three for seven in their last three games played, but they haven't been hot all year long. And when you look at some of the teams from the Pacific Division that are at the bottom in the National Hockey League and power play percentage, it's pretty incredible some of those teams that are there. Six of the bottom 12 from the Pacific. Tough division. San Jose with 103 points. They lost last night to Winnipeg, so... Anaheim with 101, an opportunity to take over the lead because they'll have more wins. Boschema at the point. We'll give it to Benino, get it back in. Now he'll fire it through traffic. Ricard Raquel providing the screen this time. Anton Bella back in the lineup for the owners. Missed 12 with an oblique injury. Penalty is over. Teams at even strength. Anaheim Ducks now 0 for 11 against the Oilers. With the man advantage, they generated two shots on that power play. Such an important penalty kill after giving up a goal early, Kevin, to come right out, kill it off. It was a, a physical penalty on Hendricks. The team backs him up, kills it off, and back to work trying to get back into the game. Starting lineups are brought to you by Boston Pizza, your hockey headquarters destination. The Edmonton Oilers, we talked about Belloff back in the lineup, and that means a little bit of adjustment for the defensive pairings. Yeah, and the one that everyone was talking about this morning was Clefbaum playing with Justin Schultz, and for Dallas Akins, loves the way that Justin Schultz has matured this year and has enough confidence in him to throw out a youngster in Clefbaum who hasn't played many NHL games to play alongside him. So they're going to see some ice time, and inevitably they're going to have to play against the top line from time to time. He's not going to look for that matchup, but if they are out there, go out there and do your job. Clefbaum played 15 minutes and 17 seconds in that game against San Jose, higher than his average so far. It's about... 13 minutes and 40 seconds. Killer stops it in behind the net. He almost paid the price as Tyler Pitlick was right there. Pitlick with Smith and Gordon. Smith taking the spot of Matt Hendricks, who's in the penalty box. Matthew Perot is dished to Silverberg. Too far for him. Schultz goes down. Silverberg takes over. Jakob Silverberg throws it wide. And that comes back to the point. Nobody there. The Ducks and Oilers both want to make a change. Andrew Cogliano, a career year for him, 21 goals on the season, the first time he has ever cracked the 20 goal barrier, got his 21st in that game against Calgary, and that was the game winner. Scriven stops it in behind the net, Taylor Hall being watched by Ben Lovejoy. Nice pass out to Perrault, moving in with Gagne, two on one, this is Sam Gagne by himself, he scores! One. I'll tell you, a little stare from Bruce Boudreau there too. Can't believe it. Almost two outnumbered rushes on the same shift, and one happens here. Just a little bit costly move here to pinch down without backup. Great job by Hall to hold on, and sure it gets out up the ice two on one. And what a pass by Perron as he just makes a little move, gets it to Gagne, goes to the backhand shelf to tie this game 1-1 with speed. Lindholm was aggressive on the two-on-one, didn't pay off as Pernod was able to get it through, and Gagne finished it off. Sam Gagne without a point in his last three games, ties the game at 443, and it's 1-1. David Perron and Taylor Hall get the helpers, and the owners are right back in this game. 
Taylor Hall with six points in his last six games. David Perron, five points in his last six. Everly with a butt hook, Lander in front. And it comes back down into Oiler territory, a huge goal for the Oilers. Louis, given the fact that how good the Ducks are, how good they are here, and the fact that they struck quickly. And to get right back into a game when you give up a goal that quickly, Kevin, it can really deflate the bench, but Edmonton doesn't get deflated. They kill a penalty off and go right out and tie it up, so you like to see that reaction. And they score on their first shot of the game. Both teams scoring on their first shots. Shots read Ducks 5, Oilers 1. 14-12 left to go in this first period. Sammy Botman tipped in. Solani out there with Maroon. And Perot. Keller stops it in behind the net. Boshevich. He is there with Robida. Stefan Robida goes right up the middle. That one is tipped high off the stick of Maroon and into the netting. Sam Gagne has reached the century mark in career goals. We're tied at one. Sam Gagne gets his 100th NHL goal, his ninth of the season. He now has 34 points on the year. And as graphic says, Louis, well, not a kid anymore. Yeah, he's not a kid anymore. And he's put up points every year that he's been in the National Hockey League, so it's terrific. Event getting his 100th goal tonight, and Taylor Hall does the nice deed of going over, getting that puck, and saying, here you go, but put this one on your mantle. A big uh, milestone for him. That was a big goal for the team in this one, tying it up 1-1. 60th game of the season for Sam Gagne. Here's Solani moving in, corrals a bouncing puck, and Scrivens makes the save. The net comes off the moorings. As Beloff took Perot into the cage, and it comes loose. We have seen that a few times in number eight's career. And they've seen it a few times in this building here as well as Timo Solani has scored 49 goals against the Edmonton Oilers throughout his career and almost makes it 50 right there in game 83 against his old adversary. Just knocks it out of the air, that big paddle that he's always used, and he just can't quite get enough on the bouncing puck. Good little job here by Marincin just to interfere enough, not take a penalty, but disrupt Solani from really getting a good shot away. 1,445th game as that puck goes off the crossbar. Petrich gets it to Smith. Smith, quick pass up for Pitlick. Gets by him, Saviza. Gets control, gets it to Silverberg. Flipped in by Boyd Gordon. And picked up there by Stefan Robida. Robida playing his fifth game in an Anaheim uniform. His first game was March the 18th, the former Dallas star. He broke his leg on November the 29th. Just getting back into action. Ferris quickly over to Petrie. Petrie to the middle for Smith. Hopped over his stick. Ricard Raquel puts it off the glass and down into Oiler territory. That will allow both teams to make a change. The Oilers, Louis, still sitting on just one shot. Yeah, had a couple opportunities to bring it to the net right there. I like the work by Pitlick down low to stay on the puck, battle, get it from low to high, and then no shot gets through to the, the goaltender Hiller, and as a result, the puck's chipped out of the zone. Everly at the blue line. Moving in is Schultz. Schultz right out in front, trying to get it to Anton Lander. Lander picks it up, plays it back to Kleffbaum. Kleffbaum through traffic, and his shot is steered aside by Jonas Hiller. And the Ducks want to relieve the pressure, and it's coming back on the icing call. There's a good little shot that got through there. Not a screen in front on Hiller, though, but I like the fact that Clefbaum shot that one here. Here's what I'm talking about. Get a shot to the net when you have bodies converging, and good things can happen. This one here, a little redirection high in the slot, and right by Ben Scribbins, who, look, you could tell he does not see that puck goes off the crossbar, and another near miss there for the Anaheim Ducks, just getting a puck to the net through all the bodies, and Edmonton can take a page from that. And start to try and get more shots from the blue line through. Six shots for the Ducks so far as Getzlaff brings it across the blue line and flips it in. Perry going after it. Ferris gets there first, quickly around the boards for Hall. Hall hit by Perry, gave it away to Getzlaff, but Petrie recovers and Hall's got the puck and he'll start away. Oilers under pressure from this top line of the Anaheim Ducks. Hall one-on-one -on -one against Botnett across the blue line. Hall snaps the shot. That was blocked by Francois Beauchemin. Getzloff brings it back. He'll dump it in and head off. Scrivens brings it around the boards, and it's picked up neatly 
There by Ferentz. He'll play it to an open wing. Kept back in by Lindholm. Lindholm going wide on Petrie. Petrie, good stick to break it up. Koivu, around behind the net for Winnick. That was broken up by Gagne. The Oilers' opportunity to get it out now as Petrie feeds it to the near side for Ferentz. He'll play it up along the boards and get it out to center ice, and the Oilers will get a change in. The Oilers, the fifth game of a six-game homestand for them. They'll play the New York Rangers on Sunday. Andrew Pagliano. Pagliano, the Iron Man. 531st straight game. He has never missed a game in his career. Impressive record. You know, when you look at he's not the biggest guy around, gets into the traffic areas, and isn't afraid to take a hit to make a play. Pretty durable to play that many games in a row. And he played here, of course, for five years and played every regular season game. Good pace to this period that is closing in on the halfway mark. Jones. Nugent Hopkins with it now. Off the boards and off the stick of Schultz. Savisa around the boards looking for Maroon. He was checked by Nugent Hopkins. The puck comes out to center and it's picked up there by Oscar Kleckbaugh. Everly checked by Maroon, gets by Spiza. Everly moving in, toe drag, shot, stopped by Hiller. The rebound cleared, and it gets by Oscar Kleffbaum. The owners will have to regroup. What a sneaky play by Jordan Everly. His 184th shot of the season. Yeah, was it Everly? He got a real good shot through there as he wound right up. Got a little hook as he came over the offensive blue line, but was able to hold on to it, draw it back. And it's a move we've seen Everly do so many times, and he's so good at it. Sports Select's Pools Hall of Fame immortalizes the big winners. It's like managing an exclusive storage locker. Pick your winners today with Pools. Well, with the owner's first goal of the night, we have our first winner in our score and win contest on behalf of Safeway and Kellogg's Siller, Siller, Cereal. Kareem Stocko of Edmonton has won a $250 gift card from Vision Electronics. And that's on the ninth goal of the season and 100th of his career for Sam Gagne. There was the Oilers' first shot. The shots now read 7-3 in favor of Anaheim. The Ducks will be in Vancouver tomorrow. And Tamo Solani will take that game off. So it's good for the Oiler fans to see him. The Ducks will be back in April, but he may not play. You talked about that sneaky little play by Jordan Everly, and he's so effective after he gets the puck through, keeps his feet moving, a little chip through right there, gets hooked up a little bit, but stays with it. And is able to draw it back, pivot, and get the shot through. And a nice save by Hiller on a guy that's been a sniper for the Oilers and knows where to put the puck and right there just creates that chance out of thin air. Jordan Everly on a three-game point streak. And has produced five points. Molesky. Backhands it in. Scribbins takes a look and he sees Silverberg bearing down on him, decides to hang on to it. It's Rogers, Oilers hockey. And it's right here on Sportsnet. When Tay Mussolini was a rookie, he scored 76 goals, one of them certainly more memorable than the other ones, and it happened March 2nd, 1993, against Quebec. And he had no penalty. And the Tommy has been placed by Klaus to surveil these two. And voilà, it's Lani! And the but! Oh! Incredible! Well, look who's there to uh, enjoy the celebration. Current Edmonton Oilers head coach, Dallas Akins. I think the celebration caught everybody off guard, and uh, but an amazing moment to uh, to be on the ice for it. It's almost like a for me, it's like a Forrest Gump moment. You know, what, what are you doing here? But you're in the moment. Yeah, Forrest Gump moment, and uh, what a nice story between these two. Tamus Solani saying even back then when he played alongside Dallas Aikens, he thought that Dallas at one point would end up being a head coach in the NHL. Louis, I don't think we'll see a rookie score 76 goals, so I'm going to go up the limb and say that. It's a pretty tall order. Wow, that's for sure. And I mean, you know, he breaks Mike Bossy's record with 54, and then just for good measure adds all those other ones. Corey Perry cutting for the net. Here is Perry! Oh, what a save by Scribbins, and followed up there by another save of the captain gets left. Scribbins keeps it a 1-1 game. Boy, look at Corey Perry look right up to the screen to say, how did I not get that one up over top of the pad of Scribbins? Great job by Scribbins to stay with him. Just a set play here. As you see, three Anaheim Ducks on the left-hand side off the wall. It'll tear him. And 
you know, Corey Perry is not known for his blistering speed, but when he gets an opportunity, deceptive, and he can get in there. That long reach just kind of takes it to the inside. He's got lots of time to put this up. And what a save by Ben Scribbins. Perry leads this Anaheim team with 37 goals. He is tied for sixth in the NHL in points. Winning. It's knocked down as the puck comes back down into Oiler territory. Schultz has got it. Everly flips it to the middle for Nugent Hopkins. Checked by Bachman. And sent in by Koivu. Scrivens takes a look. Redwa plays it off the boards. He'll get another opportunity to get it out. And does get it down the ice. It got by Lindholm, so no icing. Lovejoy. Around the boards it goes for Patrick Maroon. Back back there. Neatly by Anton Lander. Eight minutes left to go in this first period. The Oilers are going to hit the road after Sunday's game against the Rangers. They will be in San Jose and then a game against Anaheim. Oh, big hit there by Robidoff on Paul. And Perron comes right back at Robidoff and stands over him. Paul is there as well. I can't believe there wasn't a call in on this one here. And, you know, Robidoff is one of those guys that plays hard and has always played that way throughout his career. Not the biggest guy, but he finishes checks, he gets in there, and he catches Hall in a real awkward position. And the way that he goes into the boards, I just don't like it. I mean, he pile drives him in face first. Taylor Hall's a durable guy, gets right back up, doesn't really even complain too much. It was David Perron that comes in afterwards and gives him a shot. But just the way that he kind of comes into the numbers and finishes them, that's got to be a two-minute penalty. But there's no hand that goes up. Perron comes in, and it looks like he might be the only one getting the penalty. Or are they going to give Robidaw one as well? Maybe a little bit delayed because of the reaction. But there was no arm up immediately, which I'm surprised at. But it looks like they made the right one here and even this one up. Now, Robidaw goes for boarding. Perron goes for roughing. With 7.42 left to go in this first period. And we'll play four on four. Robidaw. Got an assist against Calgary in his fourth game as a member of the Ducks. He had that horrific injury earlier in the year where he broke his leg. And, you know, he said that he had a puck that he blocked here in Edmonton shortly before that. And he feels that his leg was a little weak when he went into the board at the end. And that's the reason why they feel it broke for him. But he's fully healthy. And, again, he's not a dirty player, Robert. I plays real hard, just didn't like the hit. The fact that he brought him in from behind, Taylor Hall's fine. And the referees... I'll give him credit. That leg was hey, broken on I'm November. Yeah. A referee hey, wow! Credit. Wait a minute. They got the call right. November 29th was when he broke his leg. At another historic occasion, Louis DeBrus agrees with the zebras. And I like the fact that David Perron came in and let him know that it wasn't okay. So we'll play four on four. Now the Oilers have Newton Hopkins and Emily up there. Gets left, cross ice, push it in, fires that puck, and he fired it high and wide, but then trying to keep it in at the point, he does. Gets left, and Perry, as you might expect, are up front, gets left with the puck down. Boschemann fakes the shot, now it let it go. Doesn't make it through, gets left, will retrieve. Ryan gets left, drop pass, is intercepted by Everly, he gave it away to Bachman, Bachman's shot, stopped by Trivens, big rebound for Getzlaff, backhand goes wide on the stick side. Corey Perry against Nugent Hopkins, he'll give it to Getzlaff. Pushes it to Vatten and his shot deflected away by Andrew Ferentz. This four on four is being dominated by the Ducks. Vatten in the corner. He is tied up, gets left, changes. Bonino steps on the ice. The puck comes free for Everly. And Everly will retreat behind the net. The Ducks are going to get a change in. The Oilers want to do that right now. Much need to change, settling things down. Good job by Everly just to get the puck, settle things down, get a couple fresh legs on the ice. And they withstand that storm on 4-4. Four four. Gagne and Hall are the guys up front. Lovejoy and Gagne in behind the play. Getting a little physical is... Speaking of physical, how about Schultz here? A little hip check. Schultz off the board for Hall. Hall with speed moving in. His shot is watered away by Jonas Hiller. And that puck knocked down with a high stick. If you want one tire that can handle it all, forget all seasons. You need Nokian's WRG3 all-weather tire, imported to Canada by Cal Tire. 
Time to play Safeway's Million Dollar Score and win. If any Oilers player scores five goals in tonight's game, Cheryl Rayburn of Sherwood Park could win $1 million. Shop at Swipe Safeway and you could be our next lucky winner right here on Sportsnet. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Jordan Everly up front against Koibu and Cogliano. And Louie, you think four on four is built for a guy with the speed of Andrew Cogliano. Yeah, he really had it on display the last time these two teams met January 3rd in that 5-2 loss. Edmonton suffered at the hands of Anaheim. Cogliano was his fast self, fast self as usual. Nugent Hopkins with it now. We're down to five seconds left in the four on four. Nugent Hopkins knocked down there by Evans Lindholm. Teams at even strength. And Koibu across the blue line. He'll rip it around the boards. Rip it, close it down. Cogliano is there. Everly. Win it back to the point. Spisa keeps it in. For Cogliano, he's checked by Everly. And Everly comes up with a puck. He'll play it by the net. Schultz. He gave it away to Daniel Winnick. Winnick from the corner looking for Cogliano. There is Schultz to the rescue. Koibu. Trying to keep it in, but can't do it against Nugent Hopkins. Those guys dead tired. They need to get off and will. Five minutes left to go in this first period as Winnick brings it in against Boyd Gordon. Matthew Perot in there digging for it as well. Marincin. Bellar gets it to Hendricks. Hendricks chips it down the boards. The race is on. Bosman gets there first, but takes a hit from Pitlick. More getting going on this time. Hendricks takes down Vatnin, and a penalty is coming. When we come back, the Oilers penalty killers will be going to work. Well, the Edmonton Oilers, uh, Matt Hendricks, uh, earlier in the game, finding himself in the penalty box, and he's there again after this trip on uh, Sammy Vatnin. Well, Jordan Eberle is considered a hero to so many uh, kids, and you can put Dane Holland in that group. Uh, Dane is with his mom and dad and his brother Colby. Now, Dane has had three open heart surgeries, and his wish through the Rainbow Society of Alberta was to see an Oiler game in Edmonton and to meet Jordan Eberly and consider it mission accomplished. By the way, Dane is uh, feeling much better these days, and uh, for this little guy, meeting Jordan Eberly is exactly what the doctor ordered. Yeah, look at those cheeks. Those Louis. are the rosiest yeah. cheeks I've ever seen in my life. And what a smile on his face <laughs> when he looked up at Jordan. Isn't that great? That is fantastic. Awesome stuff. Hendricks in the penalty box. Second power play for the Ducks. Gets left at the point. Throws it through traffic and then gets deflected wide. Petrie on the boards. Gordon up front with Anton Lander. Petrie. Ferris on the blue line. Digging for it is Perot. It comes to Lander, and Lander able to get it down the ice. Smith and Nugent Hopkins now will take over. Petrie stays out with Martin Marincin. Anaheim, 20th ranked power play in the lead. Perot dishes off to Perot. Perot back to the point it comes. Lindholm to Getzlaff. Getzlaff trying to get it back to Lindholm, but gets by him. And this Anaheim power play is in disarray right now with a minute 10 left in it. And Solani on the ice right now. With speed across the blue line. Drop pass for Bolesky. He played it back and Lander picked it off. Anton Lander against Getzlaff. Getzlaff slowed him up just enough for Botman to get it. Back to the captain, but Anton Lander, an opportunity for the Oilers. They've got three shorthanded goals so far this season. Solani moving in and it's offside. Boy, they call him the finish flash for a reason. He still has those amazing legs that can propel him pretty quickly. You see him just take off a couple of times there. The numbers that he's put up over the course of his career, and this is potentially the last time that we'll see him here at Rexall Place because he might not play the next game. They're really rotating guys in yep. down the stretch here to keep guys healthy, get guys in the mix, so he doesn't know if he'll be in the lineup the next time out. But uh, the other fans and NHL fans get to see him play here for sure tonight. And He's putting on a show. He had a good chance earlier on on a semi-little breakaway and a bobbling puck, and right there, he tried to get through with some speed again. So 82 career games going into this one. A full season, 91 points. Yeah, like almost a 50-goal season with 49 he's had in his career against Edmonton. He's had a couple chances to make it 50, but that just goes to show you, and you know, we talked a little bit this morning about his early years playing here 
at that time Northlands Coliseum, but you know, played the Oilers a lot. They were division rivals, and I remember him putting up a lot of goals. <laughs> Sitting on the bench watching him put up a lot of goals, but uh, they all seemed to be from the same area in tight and uh, obviously proved that it wasn't a fluke scoring 76 his rookie year. Well, you talk about, about hockey, I talk about, about Formula One. Yeah, you guys were talking of a storm. He is friends with Kimi Raikkonen, who's driving again with Ferrari. His eyes just lit up as soon as he brought that up, too. He oh. loves talking about it. He's a big car now. Smith to Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins. Moving in shorthanded with Smith. Nugent Hopkins strips towards, and that got deflected, and Hiller had to be sharp. Penalty is over, and Matt Hendricks is out of the penalty box. And the Oilers have done a good job shutting down the power play of the Anaheim Ducks so far in this game. And Scribben takes that one off the glass and hangs onto it. And all shots are good. We talked about this. Just getting pucks falling to the net. Only five for Edmonton so far in this first period. For Nugent Hopkins, he's thinking Smith's going to get through, but he gets tied up a little bit. The knuckle puck goes off the skate, I believe, the Spiza, was it? And then takes a right-hand turn. Sorry, it's that minute, but he goes off of it for Hiller. Good job by him to stay on the shot and make the save. Taylor Hall plays it off the glass and down into duck territory. Stevens takes a look, takes a hit there from Perron. Hall on the intercept is checked by Raquel. And the rookie outlets it to Bolesky with Silverberg cutting for the net. The shot never got there. Hard Raquel. Can't keep it in against Taylor Hall, who starts away with Gagne. Hall, given a bump there by Robidoff. Spiza behind the net. Gagne on the intercept. Raquel is there. Matt Bolesky off the boards for Silverberg. Jacob Silverberg cutting in against Kleffbaugh. And Kleffbaugh takes the puck away. Both those guys were talking before the game during the warm-up. And Kleffbaugh got the better of Silverberg there. Well, that's what Kleffbaugh is known for, too. Big solid defender that plays a defensive game has a little offensive instinct but pairing him with justin schultz tonight nice little combination schultz can get up in the plan for cleft bomb who's getting progressively better every game that he plays you see how quickly he got over converged on silverberg and denied him that opportunity to bring it to the net so a good play lovejoy keeps it in petrie picks it up gets left intercepts it a bouncing puck though is picked up by picklick he will chase it against Lovejoy. Hendricks coming in to help out Boyd Gordon up high. Pitlick from the corner. Pitlick being watched there by Lindholm. Gets it to Hendricks and gets it back again. Tyler Pitlick back to the point. Petrie snaps it over to Ferris. Ferris through traffic. The puck is loose. Hendricks tries the wraparound. And the puck sports free for Corey Perry. Leaves the pressure and gets it to Nick Bonino. Crisscrossing with Getzlaff at the blue line. Under a minute to go in the first period. Getzlaff pushes it to Bonino. Bonino back to the point it comes. Vatnin is there. He'll go cross ice. Boschemann chips it for Getzlaff being watched by Perry. Here is Vatnin. Fires the shot and that one goes wide. Looked like a slap pass that didn't work. Here's Boschemann hammering a shot and that was blocked by Matt Hendricks. Boschemann, good job to keep it in. We're down to 35 seconds. Perry from the corner. Boy Gordon along the boards. Can't get it by Getzlaff. That's right on net. Where Scribbins makes the save. Now Petrie wants to relieve the pressure. He will. But it's coming back on the icing with 20.5 seconds to go in the period. Well, good shift here for both sides. First, it was the third line that does a number on the top line of Anaheim. Good cycle down low was Pitlick that eventually got it back to the blue line. And the shot for Ferentz, I like this shot. Get it through the traffic, it's redirected by Hendricks, good presence by Gordon in front, and then he almost capitalizes on the rebound as he jams it right out front through the blue paint. Boy, Gordon on his knees gets the puck out for Pitlick, down to 10 seconds to go in the period. And they'll do it again on another icing call against the Oilers. You can see how difficult it is, Kevin, for the Oilers to get the pucks out of their own zone. Very good job by the Anaheim defense to really hold their ground on the offensive blue line. They're keeping pucks alive. They're making it difficult just to make those little chips out of the zone. And that battle within the 10-foot radius of that blue line will be so important in this game tonight. Boy, Gordon, sixth in the league in faceoff, lined up against Tamu Solani. Petrie. Opportunity to get it down the ice. Wind out the clock, and for the Edmonton Oilers, outshot 12-5 in that first period. It's a 1-1 game, Brendan, so, so far, so good for the Oilers. Well, Ben Scribbins uh, leading the Edmonton Oilers, and, uh, well, leading them 
into period two of play, which isn't too bad. After 20 minutes, these two teams are tied at one. And uh, as we're joined by Mark Spector, well, you're looking for leaders, and Taylor Hall is certainly a leader of this team. Are you seeing signs of maturity and progression in his game? Well, uh, what I'm seeing is what the general managers around the National Hockey League have been looking for, and that's vision. Uh, when Pete Chiarelli, the general manager of the Boston Bruins, came through town with the Bruins, uh, before the Olympics, you remember, we were talking, had dinner downstairs with him, and one of the questions he asked, he was considering Taylor Hall, he said, how's Hall's vision? And I remember saying, you know, it's all right. And he said, yeah, that's the issue. That's what separates him from being an elite player. Well, that pass he just threw there, we're going to get another angle on it. He has enough vision to know that Gagne and Braun are going to be at center. He's watched this play. Spin and fire a pass right on Perron's tape. You know what else you don't see from Hall anymore? You don't see him getting hammered every second shift. You know why that is? Because he's got vision now. 42, 33 assists is proof of that, but Kid sees the ice better. Well, Matt Hendricks tries to set the tone uh, this evening with a, a hit, a fight, doing what yep. he can, but then it, it needs to carry over from there, and did the Oilers pick up on his lead? Yeah, uh, to be a team that's hard to play against, the operative word there is team, <laughs> not just one guy. Uh, Hendricks started things off slightly. This isn't much from David Prawn, okay? It's only something if nobody does anything. Then it is much. Stefan Robodog gets the... Well, watch Justin Schultz here. Boom! You know what? That's not that hard to do. It's not a punishing hit, but this kid skates so well, he's in position to take the body like that all night long. Doesn't have to do it every time. Nice little hip check there on half of Lindholm. It makes you harder to play against. That's a huge goal for the Edmonton Oilers. All right, Louis and Kevin, get yourself set for period two. All right, in period two, guys, is the best period in the league for the Anaheim Ducks. They have scored more second period goals, 94, than any other team in the league. And Louis, it's a recipe for trouble because the Oilers have struggled in the middle frame. Yeah, they had it's their worst period actually this year as far as the goal differential between teams. And so one of those little games within the game, the best team in the NHL as far as second period goals are concerned. The Anaheim Ducks go up against a team that struggles in the second. So this will be an important 20. And Lovejoy, the pass intended for Benito, the goal scorer for the Anaheim Ducks, got by him, but he gets it back again. Benito centering pass, and that one trickles wide and gets by Corey Perry. Gets left. With it now to Perry. Perry looking for Benito. He's tied up. The puck does come free for Botanen, swing and a miss. Perron is there, scramble in front. Scrivens goes down. Perry is down as well. And Andrew Ferris has some words for Perry, who chats up. Ben Scrivens. And he gives it right back to him, too. He talked about Scrivens being vocal before, and he has a little verbal battle there with Corey Perry. And, you know, Corey Perry is one of those guys, Kevin, we all know. Look, he's still heated about this happening. Look, he just doesn't want to let it go. And this is how he gets fired up in a game, but he does make a little contact, and it is Scrivens that takes his legs out. And that's what he was not too happy with. Right there, takes the heel out, down he goes. He falls down on Scrivens, and then Ferns comes over, gives him a little shot as well. So the battle inside the blue paint continues, and Corey Perry in the middle of it. That's something we'll keep our eye on as this game goes along. Richard Hopkins, Everly, and Anton Lander there now at Bachman. Drops it around the board for Boschman. It's intercepted, but picked up by Winnick. He beats Cagliano. Look at the speed of number seven. Gets the shot away. It's weak and wide as Puttbaugh got back. Schultz plays it around the boards. Winnick against Puttbaugh. Daniel Winnick out there with the veteran, Zachary Koivu and Cagliano. And that puck loved ahead as we take a look at the first period scoring summary brought to you by Warley Parsons Court. Visit WarleyParsons.com slash careers to find your place on our team. Nick Benino got things started really quickly, 35 seconds in with his 19th, and then Sam Gagne with his 100th career goal, 9th of the season, ties it 1-1 in a period that was dominated shot-wise by the Anaheim Ducks, 12-5. And they had the only power plays in that first one. Fourth line up there now, and Gazdick, Smith, and Jones. That puck goes up and out of play. The order. Luke Gazdick. And this is a guy that is tied for second in the league in fights. He's had 15 tilts so far this season. And then a little fire from Don Cherry, one of my... Yeah favorite guys. I love Don Cherry. I don't agree with him in his analysis of Luke Gazdick. I think he's one of the toughest guys around and one of the more honorable tough guys in the National Hockey League. And ask anybody that fights him, 
I don't think he's had an instigator this year where he hasn't let the guy get into it first before throwing, if he even has had one. A lot of guys are grabbing him first, but, uh, you know, just said, you know what, respects Don Cherry, but doesn't agree with what he said. Well, he's talking about the fact that because Gaslick wears a visor, yeah. he should take his helmet off. Well, well it's an extra penalty. Yep. It's an extra penalty if you do. It's mandatory that he has to wear the visor. And you know what? Any time that a player has tried to pull his helmet off, he told me he's let him pull it off. So, I mean, Sean Thornton's a prime example in Boston. He said, let me get this helmet off. He pushed his head down. He pulled his helmet off, and away they went. He's just abiding by the rules. Elop steps up on Maroon. Gaslick. Coming back, lost it though to Perot. Perot, a Zalani shot, then Scrivens makes the save and he'll hang on. Yeah, you talk about Luke Gazdick and, you know, he's garnering a pretty hefty reputation in the National Hockey League for the heavy hands that he has, but he's put his faces off against one of the best snipers of Zing. You want to go? <laughs> I think Timu might have asked him first, hey, you want to drop the gloves? But a uh, nice little conversation there between one of the greatest goal scorers of all time. And Pretty tough customer. Pitlick to Gordon to Hendricks against Lovejoy, a guy that throws his weight around. And we have seen Ben Lovejoy against Taylor Hall in the past. This is Gordon behind the net against Lindholm. Gordon picks him off, gets a shot right on, Hunter steers it aside. Schultz trying to keep it in. Hendricks does at the point for Pitlick. He gets squeezed off there by Lovejoy. Ioner's putting on some pressure. Silverberg flips it high. Valeski had fled the zone. Uh, the puck never got to him. Kept in now, though, by Raquel. And a great deflection by Valeski goes just wide. Valeski tried a short angle shot. And that one comes all the way back down. Boy, a good little last spurge there by Valeski to get that stick out there, get a little redirection towards the net. And again, on a good shift by the third line of Edmonton. Good speed getting in offensively. Here's Perry dancing his way in. Perry out in front. And back the other way, the Oilers go. Taylor Hall with speed moving in. Taylor Hall, wrist shot, and that one missed. Back the other way, pass from Getzlaff to Perry didn't work. Hall backtracking on Benino. Botnick to Perry on the near side, moving in with Getzlaff. Ryan Getzlaff fires a shot through traffic, and it sits right on the goal line. The net is off the moorings, the whistle goes. Scriven squeezed that one and almost made it through. Sam Gagne on the bench, Louis. He had missed some games with an ankle problem. The concern there for number 89. Well, you know, you know, it's just karma. You know, when you have an injury, there's something they're trying to protect. You know, you're going to get hit in. And this Ouch. is exactly what happens here. I don't know if that's the injured ankle that Sam Gagne has been suffering from, but it looks like it is with the way he reacted. It was a hard pass that he tried to pick off. Oh, he actually might have come up and hit him in the wrist. So I guess it's good that it doesn't hit him in the bad ankle, but it's good bad, bad that it hits him in a real sensitive area. It doesn't take much. There's no padding there. It's uh, puck on bone. Shot by Bozeman, goes wide. Picked up by Schultz, who played off the glass for Pitlick. Gets by him, but then at center. Hammered in by Francois Bozeman. Cogliano going after it. Cogliano stopped by Kleckbaum. Winnick, Cogliano, and Koibu with pressure now in the order in. Bachman keeps it in at the line. Schultz against Winnick. Winnick steals it away. He'll go to the far side for Cogliano. Andrew Cogliano to Daniel Winnick. Winnick from the corner. Feeds it back to the point. Bachman gives it to Boschemann. Boschemann plays it off the end board. Scrivens would have none of it. Kleckbaum, good job to separate the puck from Andrew Cogliano. Bachman spins and plays it back behind. But it was behind Francois Boschemann. The Oilers get a change in. Ryan Nugent Hopkins up there with Jordan Everly. And Taylor Hall. Patrick Maroon with it now. Patrick Maroon cross ice pass for Perot with a backhand. Stopped by Scrivens. Nugent Hopkins back the other way. Ryan Nugent Hopkins checked by Solani. With a little help from Spiza. Everly takes it away. Everly circles it in. Back to the point it comes. This is Anton Bella. Backhands it. Paul going after it. Paul ties up with Robida. They do some pushing and shoving. Here's Belloff. Snaps a shot through traffic. Hall looking for the rebound, and he gets hammered by Robida. We saw that coming as those two were going at it earlier. This period.
Brought to you by McCain's new four meat rising crust pizza. McCain, it's all good. Friday night hockey is on right now with Kelowna hosting, but look at Robida and Hall. Good battle in front and a good job by Hall. You could tell that he knew there was going to be some conflict in front, but he went right into the battle, gets a good opportunity to screen the goalie. Great save by Hiller, by the way, through that screen. But him and Robida once again going at him. 14 and a half minutes to go in the second period. Gets left. And Hall gets it to Bonino to the middle for Perry. And that gets broken up in Perron. To Lander. Lander drop pass for Gagne. Sam Gagne with Petrie heading for the front of the net. The puck never got there and back the other way comes Perry. Perry with Benito catching up. Corey Perry goes cross side. Gets left. Looking for Benito who's alone in front. The puck never got to him. Perron separates Perry from the puck and wants to relieve the pressure. Flips it out high for Anton Lander. Lander will head off. Time now for a fourth line shift. Lucas Pisa moves it ahead to Molesky. Molesky fires a shot and rings it off the post. The puck sits there and it's cleared away by Andrew Ferris. A couple of close calls in this period, Louis, by a team that scores a lot in the second period. Yeah, good little reaction there, too, for Bolesky. He had that little redirection last shift, goes out this one here, and he doesn't hold on to this puck. The puck gets lost in the feet a little bit here if you watch. You can see Schultz trying to find it. He can, and Bolesky just comes in and rails it towards the net. And he handcuffs Scrivens, goes off the post, off the body, and almost goes back into the net here as it pinballs around a little bit. Great job to come back by Ferentz and clear it out of harm's way. But it was the quick shot of Bolesky that created that chance. Matt Bolesky, one of those platoon players for Bruce Boudreau. Bolesky did not dress in Calgary. Boucherman shot right on. Scrivens the save. Another opportunity denied. Another chance. Oh, what a save by Scrivens as he absolutely robs Jakob Silverberg. Ben Scrivens with a clinic here in the second period. Wow, are you kidding me? That's unbelievable. Two great saves on this sequence. You can just see him starting to feel the vibe dial in. First save there, bang, point blank, and he dives over with Curtis Joseph in the house getting yeah. honored tonight by the Oilers. Ben Scribbins putting on a show. He watched Curtis Joseph as a youngster growing up in Spruce Grove, and now he's making some fantastic saves in this one here. Five shots by the Ducks, five scoring chances. But Ben Scrivens has kept it a 1-1 game. Buckman brings it right back in for Anaheim. Fires a shot up high and up the shoulder into the glove for Ben Scrivens. And a fan here, well-deserved. Rexall Place fans loving Ben Scrivens. As is happening all through the National Hockey League. Fans honoring one of the greatest players ever to put on a uniform, Tamu Solani. Yeah, it's a huge ovation here from the folks at Rexall. He does, and rightfully so. And, you know, not, it's amazing. This is when you know how much of a character a guy has when he goes around and gets this type of, a, of an ovation from the opposition. He talked about coming into Canada again. He loves playing here, loves the fans here, loves the passion. Played in Winnipeg, obviously, where he started his career and had 76 goals as a rookie. A record that will probably never be broke, but uh, the swan song for Timo Solano. A career that has spanned 22 seasons. 684 goals, and Louis almost wish he'd hang around and get 700, but I think I he's, he's done everything he wants to do. You'd like to win another Stanley Cup. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. And you know, that's what he talked about this morning is gearing up. Boyd Gordon moving in with Hendricks trying to corral a bouncing puck. Koivu broke it up. Hendrick. Gordon and Hendricks out there now against the third line for the Ducks. Gordon on the intercept, hit the back of the net. Winnick relieves the pressure and gets it down the ice. Cogliano picks it up, and he is stopped by Schultz. Great stick by Justin Schultz right there. A lot of speed by Cogliano coming in. A little poke check right at the line to deny him the attack of speed. Hendricks gets to the red line, shoots it in, and comes right to Hiller. He'll leave it there for Vodman. As the owners make a change, 12 minutes, 25 seconds to go here in the second period. Everly centering pass for Nugent Hopkins, broken up there by Botman. Quick, Winnick will get it 
to Perot. He shoots it in. Scrivens has to leave it. He leaves it there for Anton Belov. Belov starts away. Anton Belov lugs it to center and then gives it to Jordan Ever. Checked by Lovejoy. Moving in. Belov fires it towards the net. Off the glass. Hall behind the net. Hall, Everly, Nugent Hopkins back together again. Salani across the blue line. Button hooks. Tried to feed it across to Lindholm. It was broken up by Everly. Everly to Hall. Hall moving in. He is stopped, but carrying on. Marincin shot stopped. By Jonas Hiller. Marincin looking for his first NHL goal. Now Gene Principe was in Winnipeg. He covered a guy that wore number 13 for the Jets. Yeah, my hair was actually the same back then as it is uh, now. <laughs> Kevin, but you know what? Timo's rocking the long hair as well, so I think that it's in, and it wasn't in uh, back in 1982. Here is a look at uh, Timo Solani. He would have been uh, 12 years old. Uh, back then, he was wearing an Edmonton Oilers jersey. Oh, how the Oilers and their fans wish he had worn one when he got to the NHL. And as Dallas Aiken said today, he is probably a nicer guy than he is a player, and that's saying a lot for a guy that's going right into the Hall of Fame. And it's true. He has been loved by his teammates, by the cities that he's played in, and by the opposition, which is not easy to do. Corey Perry moving in. His shot from a sharp angle stopped by Scrivens. Scrivens has the number of Corey Perry so far. Gets left, turns at center. Gets left, goes cross ice to Perry. Perry with Bonino in the middle. Throws it towards the net, high and wide. Batman keeps it in, pays the price as Perron ran into him. 20 shots for the Ducks, 9 for the Oilers. Kept in by Bonino. Gets left with Boschman sneaking down low. Shot by Bonino and his stick went farther than the puck. That exploded. Gagne brings it in. The owner's making changes. Oh, Gagne knocked down. Buttonen gives it to Raquel. He gets it up to center. Bolesky firing in. Bolesky moving in. Can't get the shot. Throws it right out in front. Kept in by Ricard Raquel. He'll leave it there for Silverberg. Back to the point. Boschman shot through traffic. is blocked and it snapped the stick of Ryan Jones. Long shot handled by Hiller from Clefbaum and he gets the whistle. Hockey Life, the ultimate hockey megastore. Safeway's featured participating product for tonight's hockey game is Kellogg Cereal. Oilers will have the Rangers here on Sunday before they head into California for a date with the San Jose Sharks on Tuesday, in Anaheim on Wednesday, and then finish up that trip, their final road trip of the season, against the Phoenix Coyotes. And we'll have all three games for you right here on Sportsnet. Martin Marincin drops it back for Hall, gets the puck back again. Then it went off the skate of Nugent Hopkins. Cogliano looking for it. He comes back to the point. Lindholm backhands it in. Marincin is there. He'll play it off the boards. And a penalty coming up as Lovejoy got caught up there. Everly Shiny scores! Jordan Everly upstairs. A penalty coming that won't be necessary. The Oilers have the lead for the first time in this game. Everly's got 24 goals on the season okay. and a four-game point streak. And he's been sniffing tonight, Kevin. He's been all over the puck. He's created some chances. What a heads-up play here by Marincin, who broke up the play to begin with, throws a little carom off the boards of Nugent Hopkins. He gets to it because of that collision. Perfect pass on the tape of Jordan Everly. As he knocks it down, Marincin does, puts it up the ice, and watch right the last second right there. Gets by Lovejoy, puts it across tape to tape, and Jordan Everly just shelves it for a 2-1 lead. There was a penalty coming up to Ben Lovejoy. But instead, the orders, Jordan Eberle gets his 24th, Nugent Hopkins gets his 33rd assist, and Martin Marincha gets his fourth NHL helper. The orders with a 2-1 lead. 10-22, the time of the goal. Now this is going to be icing against Anaheim.
If you're looking for commercial insurance or risk management services, contact us to see what the power of insight can do for you. Our next score and win winner, courtesy of Safeway and Kellogg Cereal, is Mary Weiberg of St. Albert, who's won the Bradley Original Electric Smoker. Congratulations to you, Mary, on the goal by Jordan Everly. And now has 56 points on the year. Nugent Hopkins has 49 points. 28 of them have come here at Rexall. Kamos Alani going after that against left bomb. Plays it around the boards. Maroon waiting for it near side. He'll play it back to Solani. It gets by him, but carrying on is Matthew Perot. Perot back to the point. Kept in by Botman for Maroon. He loses the handle. He orders an opportunity to get it out. It's pinned against the boards now with 8.40 left to go here in the second period. Oscar Klefbaugh gave it away to Matthew Perot. Maroon, Solani shot, blocked before he could get through. Chance for Perot, denied by Scrivens. Klefbaugh with it now. He'll play it to the middle, and Sam Gagne starts away. Gagne to Perot. David Perot stops, throws it behind the net. Gagne waiting for it, but it was intercepted by Vatanen. Bonino plays it back to Bosman. He'll give it to Getzlaff behind his own net, get it right back to Francois Bosman. He'll play it around the boards. Getzlaff waiting for it near side. Getzlaff off the skate of Luke Gaznik. It does come to Benino, and he sweeps it into order territory. Scrivens stays calm, gets it to Ference quickly for Gaznik. Luke Gaznik. Pass for Ryan Jones. Jones resets as he plays it back to Ference. To the middle again for Jones, off his skate. And into duck territory, Hiller's going to leave it there for Lucas Spiza. Spiza takes a huge hit from Luke Gaznik. Gaznik after the puck down behind the net. Gaznik trying to throw it out in front. It went off of Robidoff. Gets left. Inside the blue line to Benino. Benino up the Petrie. And look at Scrivens react as he made the save. Gaznik. Plays it off the glass and gets the puck to center. 22 shots for the Ducks, 10 for the Orders. But it's the Orders who have a 2-1 lead. Perry. Quick shot there by Molesky. Rebound in front. Scriven stands his ground and then he gets plowed into. Ferrets trying to pull off. Ryan Getzlaff. A net cleared away so Matt Molesky can get off Ben Scrivens. Valeski driving the net and he drove right in to Ben Scrivens. It stays two to one. Perron has been uh, trying out something new and it's tied in with my uh, personal favorite company and that would be Rogers. Uh, Perron at the morning skate uh, looked as he uh, normally does except for the fact that he was wearing a watch, a Samsung Galaxy 55. Now it reads a player's heartbeat without usually you have that strap on your chest. And also what it will do is it will calculate the distance that, in this case, the Oiler skated in practice. And maybe the best part for David is that the watch is always for on time. <laughs> <laughs> the U.S. women's Olympic team, uh, their hockey team, used that in Vancouver. Everybody was wearing that monitor. Jacob Silverberg checked by Belloc. 6.34 to go here in the second period. A period that... The Anaheim Ducks normally dominate, but the Oilers have come out strong. Everly at 10-22 has given his team the lead for the first time in this game. Valeski backhands it in, going after it, Silverberg. Silverberg, watched by Anton Bella, back to the point. Lindholm throws it towards the net, deflected, Scriven stands his ground. There's a quick shot as Raquel let it go, and he went high and wide. He never, that was a bullet by Raquel. Paul moving in now with Nugent Hopkins to Everly. Everly, toe drag, shot! And Hiller makes the glove save, and he'll hang on to it. The Goals for Heroes program is proudly sponsored by Sonovus. For every Oilers goal this season, Sonovus will donate $400 to Ballard Place Military Family Support House. To date, the Oilers have scored 182 goals for a total of $72,800. Anton Lander takes that draw, wins it back to Schultz. 
So Gagne has that option on that line of Anton Lander being able to take draws, and that's part of the versatility that Lander hopes to use to stay in the NHL, playing wing or center, whatever the team needs. He's been shuffled all over the place in the last few games, the last couple of weeks here for, for Evans and for Dallas Aikens. They really want to see what he can bring. The owners are bringing a 2-1 lead into this break. We'll be back after this. He'll be able to reiterate what he said earlier about how he absolutely owned Louis DeBrusque <laughs> on the ping pong table. Is I that think, true, Lou? I think he just used me to warm up. <laughs> <laughs> he did have pretty lightning fast reflexes, that's for sure. Five minutes, 18 seconds to go in this second period. 25 shots for the Ducks, 11 for the Oilers. Koivu spins and goes off Hendricks to Schultz. Now it comes to the front. Here's Koivu. Koivu back to the point. Boschman steps into a one-time shot, and it was blocked by Pitlick. The owner's seventh in the league in block shots. That one stung a little bit. A little hobble off the ice afterwards by Pitlick. Good job by him to get in that shooting lane. Perot out there with Solani and Maroon. Solani with it now. Kamu Solani. Back to the point it comes. Robida through traffic. Perot looking for the rebound. Oh, what a save by Scrivens, but he can't stop. Patrick Maroon. And this game is tied up at two. And, you know, just good stay with it here by the big guy, Patrick Maroon, who's a huge customer, 6'4", 225. And the puck gets lost here after the first shot by Scrivens, who makes the save. And this is something that Anaheim has started to do more often in this game in this second period. Get bodies into the blue paint, jam away, first save, second save. And then Maroon on the doorstep just jams it home. So it's Solani that sets things up, and it's not a big shot that gets through. But right there, just a little bit of a lost assignment. It was the youngster, Clefbaum, that had Maroon first, goes right through. The little rebound comes back to Maroon, who's just standing there, and gets a little gift on the side of the net, puts it home. He gets his eighth goal of the season. And he now has four points in his last three games. 15-23 in the time of the goal. Perot and Robida pick up the helpers. And for Perot, his point game streak now extends to seven games. Perry out in front for Genslap, handled by Everly, and the owners come back with Hall. Taylor Hall, right side. Taylor Hall goes cross ice for Everly. He was checked by Robida. And Genslap trying to send away Perry. Here is Perry in by himself, and he's offside. Let the shot go anyway, and you knew that was going to happen. Perry and Scrivens were going at it earlier, and now everybody's involved. As Ferrets went over to get to Perry, things starting to heat up, and Corey Perry, great player, great at getting under your skin. Boy, is he ever. They had a little history earlier in the game. They were jawing back and forth. This is most likely going to be a penalty for Perry. It should be because he heard the whistle, no question about it. I mean, here's the whistle, boom, and he skates all the way in and still zips it on <laughs> Scrivens, who makes the save. Ah, he's a pretty good actor, too, saying that he didn't hear the whistle. It was loud in here. I got to tell you, it did get loud when he was on the breakaway, but he heard it, and Hall. then everybody comes in. Taylor Hall, yeah. too, getting in there, sticking up for his goaltender. Not sure they'll even this one out. Hall and Perry are going to go to the penalty box with 3.58 left to go in the period. And Perry never at a loss for words. Well. Bruce Boudreau doesn't like it too much either. But, you know, this is that, that they're really trying to bear down and protect the goaltenders in this league. A lot of contact with goaltenders the last few years. They're barreling down on that. And, making sure that guys are getting penalized for that. Scrivens, he's been active tonight. He's been in the grill with Perry, knocked him down the one time they had words. Goal was just scoring him. Good job on him to save it on the breakaway, even though it wasn't accounted anyway because of the whistle. But the little inner battle between Scrivens and Perry, the top goal scorer of Anaheim, continues after a questionable shot after a whistle. A roughing call to number 10, and Taylor Hall's going to get unsportsmanlike. Or is it reverse? Yeah, but you think that that would be reverse. <laughs> kind is. of unsportsmanlike to shoot after the whistle and then fall <laughs> in there and roughed up. Well, that's conversation after. 
Oh, again, for the second time in this game, we'll play four on four. Nugent Hopkins and Everly on the ice. And Martin Marinch along with Schultz. Bonino and Getzlaff. Spiza and Robida. Everly against Spiza. Spiza separates him from the puck, and he'll get it to Robida. Checked by Nugent Hopkins. They both go down. The puck is underneath. Nugent Hopkins trying to dig it free from Robida along with Everly. Play continues. The puck now loose. It'll come back to the point. Schultz waiting for it. Schultz goes cross ice. Marincin off the end boards. The Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins will give it to Jordan Everly. Everly. Schultz down low. Justin Schultz with it. He hassled there by Benino. Pass to Marincin. Opportunity now for Getzlaff and Benino moving in two on one. This is Getzlaff. Drop pass. Visa shot. Stopped. Getzlaff with it now. He'll play it to the middle. Benino fires a shot that goes wide. And Lovejoy throws it around the board. Scrivens, good job to knock that puck down for Justin Schultz. Marincin under some pressure. And Louis, a little baptism by fire for number 85. Yeah, no question, but I couldn't believe how fast he got back, Kevin. Just a great job by him just to get the feet pumping and get back and force Getzlaff to make the play behind him instead of across in the two-on-one because of that good effort getting back. But what a pass by Getzlaff. I mean, he sells one, looks for the other. Great opportunity to get up in the play by Spiza. Getzlaff with 49 assists on the season. 22 seconds left to go in four-on-four. It's... Petrie around the boards, Lindholm pinching to keep it in against Matt Hendricks. The Ducks with 16 shots in this period. And according to our stats man, Paul E. Dangerously was back manning his position, and we're glad he's here. Ten chances. Hard Raquel as both Perry and Hall come out of the penalty box for back to five on five. Marinci. Spinning, using the glass to get it up to center. Blackman just backhands it back in. Marincin, hard pass for Petrie. Petrie gets it to settle down. Can't get it by Molesky. Nice pass to Solani. Solani tripped up there by Jeff Petrie. Play continues. A minute and a half left to go in the period. Francois Boschevin. Behind his own nut. Netty is checked by Hendricks. Raquel. Plays it up along the boards. Stelloff, good job to keep it in. Raquel with it now. Out of the pass for Solani. Hendricks and Bolesky. Hendricks Two and Bolesky. The, fences. the helmet comes off of Matt Bolesky thanks to the fist of Matt Hendricks. Now they'll tie up. I'll tell you what, another guy, Bolesky, that can really swing away. Both these guys, the first three or four punches they threw were bombs. And then they tie up afterwards after a clean hit. Pileski didn't like it, gives him a shot, and they drop the, go drop the gloves and go after it. We talked, Kevin, about this third line getting in aggressively on the four check, banging bodies, and, and just getting possession in the offensive zone right there. Good four check. That finish there on Pileski didn't like it. Little shot afterwards. A couple little words exchanged, and they throw down. And here's that chance we just talked about earlier as Marincin just kind of gives it away trying to go through, pick the pocket. But look at him get back. Forces the back pass to Spies instead of the cross pass over to Benino, which was the better play because he gets that stick in the lane. He takes it away and Scrivens is able to handle Spies coming in straight on. So a good back check after a mistake made, corrects it for himself and gets back into the play. So Bolesky and Hendricks will both head to the dressing room. There's only a Minute five left to go in the period. Ball trying to get it out, can't do it. Blackman keeps it in. Schultz hit the post, ran into it, trying to cut the corner to five. Cogliano to Winnick. Winnick behind the net. He's got Koivu in front. Cogliano shot in that one. Rips just wide. And then Koivu trips up. <laughs> Left bomb. And play continues. I guess when you've been in the league that long, hey, 18 years, you get away with some stuff. Age old Finn versus Swede right there. Oh, yeah. Paul turns back to the point. Petrie long shot high and wide. Everly picks up the rebound. Swept around the boards. Petrie pinching in. He runs in to win it. Smith, slap pass for Nugent Hopkins. He tipped it wide. Everly on the far side. Tip high. Petrie keeps it in. 14 seconds left to go in the period. Vatman. Boschemann around the boards for Koivu. He'll just get it down the ice. 
Terrence throws it right back in. And this period is going to come to an end in the highest scoring right at the end. Gordon shot stopped by Hiller as the horn goes. Boy, great hustle there by Ryan Smith to get in and dig that puck out right to Boyd Gordon with Jones going there as well, too. And Gordon did get a shot. I think it was a little bit after the buzzer, but right at it. Talk about a buzzer beater. And it goes off the defenseman and off the goaltender Hiller. Look at the clock running down. It expired before that shot was taken, but a good hustle there at the end to stay with it right to the end in the second period here. Well, uh, when they walked out after one period of play, it was uh, tied at one. When they walk out after two periods of play, tied at two are the Edmonton Oilers with the uh, Anaheim Ducks. And, uh, you know, we talked to Curtis Joseph. You know him well from the days of covering yeah. the Edmonton Oilers. He was a spectacular goalie, and the Oilers may have a Cujo-like goaltender in the name of Ben Scribbles. He's playing like that tonight. I was in the building in the old Reunion Arena that night when he made that save on uh, Joe Noonan. It was awesome. Uh, ben Scrivens, you you know what? You can see what he's doing tonight. He's giving the Oilers clearly what they hadn't had enough of this year, which is, you know, you can give up 28 shots in two periods and be tied 2-2. But here's what I like more. Watch him get absolutely bold over there. Uh, he does what he does. But this is the TV timeout right after. He's over-talking Oscar Kleckbaum. This isn't a goalie making it all about him. I got run over. I'm mad. Someone's got to protect me. He's over being a calming influence on a defenseman that's young, that's having a rough night against a really good offensive club in Anaheim. These saves speak for themselves. I mean, this kid's playing his uh, buns off tonight, not and, Tyler buns either. By the way, we hope he's doing well after uh, having some uh, issues with the neck uh, after yeah. he took a shot there. Uh, ben Scrivens is probably thinking, I like what I see out of Taylor Hall. He's been involved a lot tonight, but he made a play that maybe a lot of people, except for you, didn't notice. Yeah, there was a little a play on the second Oilers goal. You know, we talk about the little things that you have to do to be a complete player. We talked last period about Taylor Hall doing a lot more things lately. What's that? He stays on side. It's not much, right? Well, it means a little bit more when that puck goes in that. Watch this play. We're going to slow it down for you here. He gets knocked over by Ben Lovejoy. There's a penalty being called here. Watch this. Watch his left leg. Oh, he just stays on side. Stays on side long enough for this bullet pass right on the tape of Jordan Everly. It's in the goal. You know, it doesn't mean much until the goal goes in. Then it means everything. Taylor Hall really bringing it tonight. Well, you know what? I love working with these guys. It's a joy. <laughs> oh, Go ahead, Kevin. He was waiting 40 minutes to say that. <laughs> <laughs> a third period there. about to get underway. The Oilers have won seven games when they've been tied after two, and that's where they sit here against the Anaheim Ducks. Louis, we talked about it in the second period, that the Ducks were the best scoring team in that period. The Oilers matched them. It was Everly and Maroon, and the Oilers have got that fighting chance here in the third period. Gets left with Perry and Bonita. Gets left to Perry. Perry throws the first shot on net, and Scriven steers that aside. Jeff Petrie, 17 minutes and 51 seconds through 40 minutes. Here comes Taylor Hall, and he draws a penalty against Stefan Robida. And the Oilers will get their first power play of this game. The scoring summaries are brought to you by Warley Parsons Court. Visit warleyparsons.com slash careers to find your place on our team. One goal apiece in the first period is Benito 19th, Sam Gagne with his 900th career goal, and then in the second period, Jordan Everly and Maroon get one each for each team, so it's 2-2 heading in third. Good movement here by Taylor Hall just to keep going around the defender, Robita, who's had a battle with him all night long, stick between the legs. He keeps his feet moving, tries to get around, draws the penalty. And as you mentioned, the first power play for Edmonton coming up here. A power play that is ranked fifth best at home in the league. Gagne snaps a shot with Ryan Smith in front. Smith will give it to Gagne. Schultz is on the blue line. Parole with it now, feeds it out in front, trying to get it to Ryan Smith. He was checked by Ben Lovejoy. Hall at the blue line, throws it around the boards. Ryan Smith comes up with it, gives it back to Taylor Hall. Hall, Smith going in front to Gagne, it hopped over his stick and sent down the ice. The Oilers with the third most power play goals at home in the NHL. They've got 29 on the season. 0 for 2 against San Jose, 0 for 5 in the season series against Anaheim. This is Schultz. Sam Gagne, down low for David Perron. He's got seven power play goals. Perron plays it back to the point. 
Schultz gives it right back to Burrow. Burrow feeds it out in front of it. Off button and skate. Picked up on the far side by Hall. He'll give it to Perron. Back to Schultz. Schultz waits. Now to Hall. Hall takes a look. Taylor Hall. Perron and Smith in front. Schultz one time's a blast. Off the stick of Perron. And then fired down the ice by Sammy Vatnin. Scribbins. Well, leave it for Petrie. Cogliano and Silverberg are up front now as Jones and Lander join the attack. This is Lander along with Nugent Hopkins. 34 seconds left to go in the penalty. Lander. Under some pressure there from Francois Boschema. Everly. Around the boards for Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins. Cogliano on him. Nugent Hopkins back to the point. Jeff Petrie is there. Petrie to Nugent Hopkins. Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Being watched by Ben Lovejoy. Back to Petrie. Quickly over to Jordan Everman. Everman to Petrie now. Makes the shot. Nugent Hopkins feeds it in front for Lander. He tipped it and his stick is broken. The penalty is over. Teams at even strength. Ryan Jones from the corner. The orders with control. Out of the penalty box. Stefan Robida. Robida. At center. The Ducks make a change. Perry gets left. Moving in. Here is Perry. Backhand. He put it wide. And that goes flying off the moorings. And Ryan Jones getting up slowly as he crashed into the cage. Remember, Ryan Jones blocked a shot, took it off his knee in the game against San Jose. He's hurting, but he looks like he could be okay. Boy, two of the two worst guys you want in a two-on-one after a power play. Great pass by Getzlaff. And for Perry, he just can't hang on to it to go to the backhand side. The early chance and the best chance on the power play, a little pass through by Perron to Ryan Smith. And because Hiller gets the stick on there's a little change up in pace, a little swing early by Ryan Smith looking to break the power play record for the Edmonton Oilers. Almost has it there. The Oilers generate one shot on that power play. Ryan Jones and a little bit of discomfort trying to work it out. Yeah, he went in hard, Kevin into the end wall. He's going to go down the tunnel. Yep. We saw Tyler Pitlick walk down the tunnel a little earlier on, and, and you can tell that Jones is obviously not feeling the leg a little yep. bit too much there as he went in heels first and with a lot of pace into the boards. So the Oilers down two forwards. Pitlick and Jones will try and get an update as soon as we can. Still plenty of time left in this game. 16.45. Perry throws a shot towards the net, a sneaky little wrist shot that Scrivens had to be sharp on. Gagne in the near side. Sam Gagne plays it off the boards for David Perron. Perron gets to center. He'll throw that puck in. Hiller leaves it for Lucas Pisa. Both teams making changes. Maroon tied the game at 15-23 in the second period. Big number 62 plays it around the boards for Solani. Tamu Solani. Again, Schultz to the far side it goes. Jordan Everly waiting for it. Takes a hit from Matthew Perot. Nugent Hopkins gets hammered there from behind by Maroon. <laughs> Gives him a little whack after. And a little collision with Everly and Perot. And Perot just getting up slowly. He is making his way over to the Ducks bench. Yeah, he's a little shaken up too. Guys are going down. Dropping like flies out there on the ice right now. Nugent Hopkins brings it in. Here's Everly. He's got Hall out in front. Swings a pass out in front. And Botman was there, and back the other way comes Maroon with Raquel and Solani. Solani going to the front of the net. Timo Solani denied there by Oscar Clefbaum, and a great defensive play by number 84. Taylor Hall with Billock joining the rush. Hall gets hammered as he throws the puck towards the net. He was knocked down by Ben Lovejoy. Those two guys have had a history this year. Ben Lovejoy's played Taylor Hall, Jordan Everly, and Nugent Hopkins really aggressively all year long and the first couple matchups it continues in this third with a big hit on Hall. Taylor Hall took the hit to get the shot away. Luke Gastic out the ice now. He is stopped by Silverberg. Anton Bella for Ryan Smith tips it in. He'll chase after it. Killer swings it around on the boards. Robidon to Getzlaff to the middle for Cogliano. Andrew Cogliano with Jakob Silverberg. Silverberg Takes the shot, pass saved by Scrivens, and he reaches out and covers up. Oiler fans, do you want a piece of history? Visit the new Sportcheck flagship store, West Edmonton Mall, between now and Sunday to receive your free limited edition Edmonton Oilers Frozen Moments hockey card set. Cards are available exclusively at the new Sportcheck West Edmonton Mall location while quantities last. 
Team Mussolini, Kevin, with another opportunity here as he goes through aggressively. Watch Clefbaum, though, that long stride, long stick get into action, and he denies a sure tap in there for Solani in the back door. One of the best goal scorers of all time. And uh, Ducks end up their top line. Bonino gets left and Perry uh, against the Gagne line. That has David Perron and Anton Lander on it. Perry. He'll go cross ice and went off the stick of Lander and it's shot right back in by Jeff Petrie. Good step up there by Petrie to stay in the middle zone, not back in too far. He's able to step up and put that puck deep. Robada across the blue line, drop pass for Perry. Perry fakes the shot, gives it to Robada, circles it in, puts it out in front. And it comes right to Anton Lander and back the other way we go. Jeff Petrie sweeps it in and gets by Hiller. Robida. Gagne trying to find Everly, who is tied up there by Getzlaff. And this is going to be icing against the Anaheim Ducks. Climb higher than ever before. Order your 2015 Ski Do today at Martin Motorsports. Shop and swipe your club card at Safeway today. You could be our next lucky winner. Watch future Sportsnet telecasts. You could win a week of unlimited luxury, dreams, resorts, and spas. Courtesy of redtag.ca, Louis and Kevin talking about players being injured. Tyler Pitlick, a leg injury, will not return. And we have seen that before. He is kind of snake bit when it comes to leg injuries. Got that goal in Phoenix and then had to leave. Trying to make your way on the, a team, trying to make an impression, Louis, and you got to stay healthy, and it's an unfortunate situation for Tyler Pitlick. Really tough situation. Thought he had a good two periods on that third line with Hendricks and Gordon. Taylor Hall, centering pass, Everly. He is checked by Vatnin, who plays into the corner. Hall is there. Hall, Nugent Hopkins, and Everly. Everly, out in front for Hall. Checked away there by Beauchemin. Belloff keeps it in for the Oilers on the far side. Now on the near side, Martin Morinchin steps up. Nugent Hopkins in a tough battle, gets it to Everly. Maroon watching both of them. Vatnin comes in and knocks down Jordan Everly. Maroon will start away for the Ducks. He just wants to dump that puck in and head off for the end of the shift. 12 minutes, 57 seconds left in regulation time. 32 shots for the Anaheim Ducks, 15 for the Oilers. Lindholm to Zacho Koivu. Koivu gives it right back to Lindholm that gets by him, comes back to the point. And a good job by Marincin to keep it in. Lindholm, another opportunity to move it, and he will bring it himself. Pass to Cogliano. Cogliano moving in, snaps the shot, hand save. And the rebound taken there by Ryan Smith. Anton Belloc in the middle for Hendricks. Again, the Oilers down, two forwards. Smith fakes the shot. Good play there by Lindholm to strip him of the puck. Winning under pressure. And the Ducks get it out to center. Ferris shoots it right back in. Hiller leaves it there for Ben Lovejoy. Anaheim has tied a team record or wins on the road for the third time in their history. They have won 22 away from the Duck Bond. And it struggled as of late, though, and it's that little adversity that they faced the last little while. They got off to such a great start to the season, Kevin, that everyone thought they were just going to run away with things, but they've hit a little bit of a, a road bump and have started to claw their way back, winning the last couple. So you can see what they did the first 23 in the last 23 big difference in the numbers and now they want to close out in that winning ways Remember they started the season 20 0 and 2 at home and since then they are 5 7 and 2 The owners will be in Anaheim the next Wednesday First a trip to the shark tank next Tuesday Pearl Stopped up feeds into the middle quick bomb his shot Hockey League goal, and the Oilers retake the lead. Well, I'll tell you, talk about redemption, and what a better way to redeem yourself. It was Clef Bob with a mistake that led to the second goal by Anaheim. He's had a good defensive game tonight, made some great plays, and now stepping up, gets his first National Hockey League goal. Just gets to his spot, gets the puck, zips at home. Great screen in front. No chance for Hiller on this one here is Perron. Great little delay by him to wait by his time. 
finds Clefbaum, he drills it home through the screen of Gagne, and a 3-2 lead. Oscar Clefbaum in his eighth National Hockey League game gives the orders the lead. And David Perron now has two assists on the night. Justin Schultz gets the other helper. And he sets a career high with his 20th assist of the year. A big night for Oscar Kleckbaum. First the defensive play against Timo Solani, and now his first goal. He's only 683 behind the finish flag. <laughs> exactly. And you know, for Justin Schultz, the first point in his sixth game against the team that originally drafted him. Nugent Hopkins had that puck go by him. Big monkey off his shoulders there. Amberley, his shot is blocked. The owners buzzing around the Anaheim Duck Cage. Smith, Hendricks, and Gordon. Again, the owners doing this shorthanded. Tyler Pitlick out with a leg injury will not return. Ryan Jones is also in the dressing room. Hendricks shot. That one goes wide. It's kept in there temporarily by Belloc. He's got a hurry. Maroon centering pass broken up there by Belloc. Salani trying to keep it in at the line against Boyd Gordon. Boyd Gordon doing anything he can to get it out. Good job. That's staying in the battle right on the line there. Allows his teammate to come in and help him out. Belloc. Can't get it by Maroon. Back to the point he comes. Atlas Lindholm throws it towards the net. It's picked off easily by Belloc. Richard around the boards for Hendricks. Gordon helps him out again by getting the puck to center. Lindholm is checked by Ryan Smith right in front of the order bench. The puck is still alive. The orders with 16 shots. The Ducks have 33, but the orders have the lead. Koivu at the blue line. Zabiza fires a shot that got knocked down, and that hurt Anton Belloc. Hit him high. Anton Belloc slowly making his way over to the order bench. And those ones just, uh, you can see him just trying to will the pain to go away as that one just stung him as he tries to just shake it off before going off. But a good job by him to get in. This one gets up in a hurry. It comes up high and hits him. I don't know where exactly it contacted him, but no question. You can tell that one stung. And jeez, I'll tell you. Good job by him to pay the price there. 9.13 to go in regulation time. Corey Perry, Nick Benino, and Ryan Getzlaff on the ice right now. Getzlaff trying to make a move around Lander. Getzlaff with Lander all over him. Back to the point it comes. Great play by Perron to break up that pass intended for Spisa. Rubbing up. Fires it right back in. Lander under pressure from Nick Benino. Lander checked by Getzlaff. Perry on the wraparound. Gets lap as well. Lander bumps into by Benino. Perry to the middle. Gets lap waiting for it. But instead, it's Sam Gagne who gets the puck down the ice. Gagne and Perron. David Perron moving to the middle. Perron waits. Deals for Hall. Hall from the corner. Taylor Hall with Sam Gagne. Gagne gives it right back to Hall. Everly in the high slot. It comes to Ferrets. Ferrets. To Everly, to Gagne. Gagne throws it towards the net. Hall reaching for it. Everly right after it against Robidoff. Gets left. End of the shift. Will play into the middle for Silverberg. It gets by him. Now the owners get possession in their own end. Jeff Beecher. Everly bounces it in. Nugent Hopkins going after it. Lovejoy there first. They'll get it to Hampus Lindholm. Lindholm off the boards for the speedy Cagliano. Cagliano backtracked there by Taylor Hall, who leads the team in takeaways. 7.45 left to go here in regulation time. Jakob Silverberg. Raquel to Silverberg. Looking for Cagliano. Broken up there by Matt Hendricks. But this is Silverberg. Plays it out in front. Raquel begging away. And Ben Scrivens holds his ground and covers it up. Oscar Clefbaum gets his first goal in the National Hockey League. Say it all.
Yeah. Outstanding play, outstanding results. Brought to you by Remax. Outstanding agents, outstanding results. 32 saves for Ben Scrivens, kept in this game so far. And a couple doozies on this shift here. The first one, the second one, but it's the third one by Silverberg. Looks like it's a wide open net. Watch Scrivens just lunge across. Ella Cujo, who's in the building tonight, being honored. As once an oiler, always an oiler, and he denies Silverberg on the doorstep. That's the play of the game. 34 to 16, the shots on goal. With 7.20 left to go in regulation time. Boschemann keeps it in to Solani. Solani to Vaknin. Vaknin through traffic, and it's blocked by Matt Hendricks. Vaknin has to chase back into his own zone. Boschemann up the middle for Matthew Perot. Solani will gather it up in his own zone. Quick pass. Maroon goes between his legs for Perot. Ferentz around the board, gave it away to Solani. Solani behind the net, comes out in front. Maroon with a shot, opportunity for Perot, and that's denied. Solani with it now. Temu Solani plays it back to Vaknin. Vaknin throws it towards the net, and a glove save by Ben Scrivens with Perot and Maroon looking for the rebound. Well, we have another winner in our score and win by swiping a free club card. Debbie Melanson of Edmonton has won the Men's Boulevard Marine Star Chronograph Watch, courtesy of Safeway and Kellogg Cereal and Oscar Lefbaum. Getting a little congratulations from Kelly Buckberger, a little coaching on the bench, a little pat saying, hey, great job, kid. Way to stay with it. And, you know, the Oilers doing the right thing with Oscar Clefbaum, allowing him to grow up a little bit down the farm, going to let him season, getting some games in here. A reward for his fine play this year and building up. But what a goal by him, a big one for his team. And he's been averaging about 13 minutes and 43 seconds, and we saw some great defensive plays from number 84 before he added that offense. And you're right, that's what he's known for, Oscar Clefbaum. He's one of those guys that's a stay-at-home type of player and then prides himself in the defensive side of the game. He's a big frame. He uses it well to separate man from puck and obviously a little faster here up in the National Hockey League level and that's going to be the next step is being able to do it on a consistent basis with the speed of the game here. Spiezer with a wrist shot gets afflicted wide. Perry in the corner. Perry, Bonino and Getzlaff expect to see a lot of them with six minutes and 15 seconds left to go in regulation time. Boy, Gordon, again, he and Hendricks have been blocking shots like crazy in this night. Gets left to Benino. Benino, wrist shot up high, rebound for Perry. And Scrivens takes it away from him, and Ferentz knocks down Perry. That battle has been going on all night. And Scrivens is not going to let Corey Perry celebrate. And look at this, holds on to it. And the Oilers fans will like the fact that uh, even though the Anaheim Ducks find themselves considerably ahead of Edmonton in the standings, when you look at these two teams over the last six weeks or so, uh, Edmonton has been just as good, if not better, than the Ducks do, Kevin. And they're better right now by one goal with five minutes, 47 seconds left to go in regulation time. David Perron looking for Sam Gagne and was broken up there by Jakob Silverberg who pushes it out to the middle. Cogliano after it. He won't get a chance. Lindholm to Lovejoy to Cogliano. Cogliano bounces it in. Raquel going after it. Cogliano keeps it in at the corner. Lovejoy. Against Lander. Now on the far side. Race for it. Campus Lindholm. Marincic. Under pressure from Cogliano. Plays it around to the near side. Silverberg. Raquel. Ricard Raquel right in front for Cogliano. Vatnin keeps it in. Raquel has it off over his stick. An opportunity now for Nugent Hopkins. Calmly plays it over to Schultz. Quickly up for Lander. Lander backhands it out and down the ice. That will allow the Oilers to make a change. 39 shots for the Ducks. Vatnin turns under pressure from Everly. Chase back into his own zone. He'll get it to Matthew Perot. Perot to Salani. Salani moving in against Barrett. Salani shot at the side of the net. Maroon with it now. Out in front, they score. It's Perot. Matthew Perot has tied the game with 4.30 to go. Perot gets his 17th goal of the season. And we're not at a three.
Blackman all set up on the speed of Timo Solani once again streaking down the right hand side as he's done so often. Puck up on edge, doesn't quite get the shot he wants, but he stays with it. Good finish by Ferentz, and then the big guy Maroon comes in, dishes it right out to Perot, who just chisels this one home upstairs over top of the shoulder of Ben Scrivens. I think Scrivens thought this one was going to come a little bit more direct, but it goes upstairs, can't react in time. 3-3. Three, three. And the Anaheim Ducks, you can see it deflects up off the stick of Taylor Hall. That's why it got up so quickly past Scrivens. And the pressure of the Ducks pays off. They tie this game. Second point of the night for Matthew Perot. A goal and an assist. And a seven-game point streak. We're not in at three. Patrick Maroon gets his second point of the night. Gets last. Fires a shot. It's deflected up high. 15-30, the time of the goal. Hendricks, long shot. Amo Solani gets his 43rd assist in his career against the owners, his 92nd point. He now has 771 career helpers. Matthew Burrow. 17 goals of the season. We're not in it three here at Rexall. Three minutes, 54 seconds to go in regulation time. The Ducks out shooting the orders 41 to 17. But it's a 3-3 game. Ricard Raquel with Cogliano and Silverberg. Sam Gagne chops it off the boards and gets it out. He is with David Perron and Anton Lander. Scrivens. Plays it around the boards. Raquel on the intercept to Cogliano. Cogliano on his foot for Silverberg. His shot is stopped by Matthew Scrivens. 42 shots now for the Anaheim Ducks. Flat bar. He'll give it to Perot. The owners want to get their top line out there. Paul Everly, Nugent Hopkins. Schultz chops at it, but it's an offside call at the blue line. Now the orders, Louis, down two forwards in this game in the form of Tyler Pitlick and Ryan Jones. And yeah, both, we know that Pitlick isn't going to return. We haven't gotten word yet whether or not Ryan Jones is going to return, but since the fact that he hasn't been out, I'm guessing that he's not going to return to this game. He's not a guy that goes down easily. You don't see him leave the bench too often. When he does, he's injured. He didn't look like he was in too good a shape leaving the ice, so I don't expect him to be back. Oilers next game, the sixth game of this homestand will be Sunday against the Rangers. Patriot to Marincin. Marincin for Hall. He was checked by Bachman. Hall pumped off the puck by Maroon. Solani with it now. Timo Solani against Jeff Petrie. Gets it to Perot. He's got Maroon out in front! Maroon plays it back to the point. Lucas Pisa can't keep it in. And offside is Patrick Maroon. Maroon, the big body, he's been around the net all night tonight, has a goal, has an assist, and, you know, he hasn't been super flashy, but he's just been that guy that goes to the blue paint, that's the way he has to play, he's had four consecutive 20 or more goal seasons down in the American Hockey League, and first full year in the National Hockey League here for Patrick Maroon, and he's making the best of it, playing with some pretty skilled players, you know where to go, go to the net, this one almost banks off the ski, that might have been a kicking motion there, the way he put that in there, but he's been around it all night. Eight goals on the season, Louis, and he's got 11 fights. Six foot three, 230 pounds. Ryan Smith. Nice little play to Gordon, who flips it in. Hiller makes the save, no rebound. Our game review is brought to you by The Brick. Nobody beats The Brick for furniture, mattresses, appliances, and big screen TV. Benino got things started early and 35 seconds into the game. Sam Gagne was the one that tied it with his 100th career goal. And Oscar Kleffbaum did have the lead for a little bit with his first NHL goal in this third period. But since, it was Matthew Perrault that has tied this game 3-3. Just over two minutes left to go in regulation time. Getzlaff feeds it ahead for Benino. By him, Ferris will give it to Schultz. Schultz checked by Perry. Gagne in to help out. For Lander. Lander. Outlet for David Perrault. Perrault moving in with Lander. Perrault moves to the middle. Snaps the shot. Hiller the save. And he steers it just wide. Gets loud. Throws it behind his own net. 
Bocheman pushes it up for Benino, chops at it against Ferentz, but Perron is there at the blue line to keep it in. David Perron snaps a shot, Hiller the save, with Lander looking for the rebound. Great move there by Perron. And Perron, sorry, and he had two real good chances on this ship. The first one, good drive to the net by Lander, and then this one here just walks around, keeps it in alive on the play in the offensive zone and zips it through and he can really get a lot of steam on the shot not wind it up watch it come off the stick high it's wobbly great job by hiller to stand his ground and make the save but did run two assists on the night it's been all over petrie marinchin fires a shot a bouncing puck is cleared away by ben lovejoy everly against lovejoy lovejoy gives him a shot but everly stays with it get a little help there from taylor hall ricard raquel to the middle for Koivu, quickly to Cogliano. Cogliano against Petrie, and Petrie steps up and gives the former Oiler a shot. Lovejoy plays it off the end boards. Less than a minute to go in regulation time. As Everly flips it out to center. Lovejoy to Cogliano. He'll play it back to Hampus Lindholm. Lindholm, quick up for Silverberg. Checked by Petrie. The Ducks making a change as they put Getzlaff out there with Perry and Benino. 38 seconds to go in regulation time. Gets left. Benino. Perry steps into a shot. Scribbins the save and he'll hang on to it. 44 shots fired his way. 41 saves for Ben Scribbins. Another real high quality chance. I mean, high quality for Corey Perry. This guy can fire it from everywhere. He walks right into the dot and tees this one up. Great reaction by Scribbins here to be out and really not give him a whole lot to shoot at. But uh, Corey Perry's been dangerous all night long. His typical pesty, feisty, nasty self around the, around the net. Him and Scribbins have had a little battle all night long. 24 quality chances for Anaheim in this game so far. Boy Gordon wins the draw. Perron flips it out. Lander waiting for it. Cut off there by Getzlaff. 22 seconds to go. Pass for Perry. Didn't work, and Perron comes back into his own zone. He will drop it back for the captain. Schultz to the near side for Perron. Perron sees it go by him, no icing. Oshaman, hard pass up intended for Getzlaff. And this will be icing against Anaheim with .6 seconds to go. We'll have to adjust the clock and see how much time is actually remaining i think that's just always the reaction to make sure that there isn't some time that evaporated off and after the whistle after the fact see if you can't get a little bit more on the clock if you're edmonton if you're anaheim ducks you're hoping it went down even further six attackers will be out there for the oilers with just 0.8 seconds to go here saying there's a chance <laughs> Anton Lander is the guy who's going to step in the circle against Ryan Getzlaff. Now it's going to be Benino against Lander. Is there enough time? And that one wasn't dropped fairly. So we'll do it again. It's getting to be like a basketball game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Trying to get this .8 seconds run down. Again, Benito against Lander. From the draw, the owners. Ferris tried to get a shot away, but this one's going to overtime. Absolutely. Great goaltending by Ben Scrivens here. 41 saves for him on 44 shots. The Edmonton Oilers have stayed in this game, although not getting as many shots, only 20 at the other end on Hiller. But they found a way to get three by him. Had the lead for a little bit in the third period, but the Anaheim Ducks were able to battle back Kevin and tie this one heading to overtime. They're a great team this year. They showed it there with not giving up in the third period, pushed right to the end, and now it goes to the extra. Gene, the 17th time that the orders will go to extra hockey. And uh, Louis and Kevin, final time for the Molson Canadian presents Oilers game day live tweet up. Uh, join your fellow fans in the Oilers Octane at the Ranch Roadhouse on Wednesday, April 2nd, when the Oilers visit Anaheim on Sportsnet West. Doors will open at 6 p.m. exclusively for RSVP guests for a meet and greet and photo op with Oilers alumni and Stanley Cup champions Grant Fuhrer and Marty McSorley. 
Guests will also receive a Molson sampling and complimentary buffet along with tons of prizes to be won. Follow the Edmonton Oilers on Twitter for contest updates or visit edmontonoilers.com slash gamedaylive for more information. A huge opportunity here, Louis, for the Edmonton Oilers. Anaheim now has 102 points. If they get the win, they take over top spot in the Pacific. The Oilers can deny them of that. The pressure on Anaheim. They need these points. We were talking to Bruce Brudro about how you play it. Do you go hard to get the Pacific Division, avoid LA in the first round, or do you leave something in the tank for the playoffs? He mentioned the fact that they have that deep depth that allows them to play almost like the Oakland A's used to, a platoon system. We'll see if it pays off. Yeah, no question. You can. They want it. They want first in the Pacific. That's all they're looking at here. You can see how tight it is in the Western Conference. But for the Anaheim Ducks, they have to contend with the San Jose's, the Chicago's, and especially L.A. too right now, who's playing some great hockey. They want the title. Overtime underway. The order is 7-9 in overtime. Anaheim is 7-7. Seven and seven. Boschman with Perry out in front. Opportunity denied. Ben Scrivens had Perry all over him. And a hooking penalty has been called. Just 21 seconds in, Andrew Ferentz is going to the penalty box. And Corey Perry, as he's done all game, goes to the net right here. The little hook right there by Andrew Ferentz. And I didn't think it was a real deep hook, to be honest. That was more of a lift of the stick of Perry as the pass was coming through. Just a little jab by Ferentz on the back check, but the referee saw it differently. This one did get to the net, but a great job by Ben Scrivens to close the door on the line, not to allow it to go over. So a very quick penalty in overtime, and now it'll be four and three action. Anaheim has called a timeout. The Anaheim Ducks trying to set a team record for wins on the road. They're also trying to match a season best 48 wins. 2006, 2007, the last time they had 48 wins, they hoisted the Stanley Cup that year. Martin Marincin, Jeff Petrie, and Boy Gordon are out there now as Andrew Ferentz sits in the penalty box. Here it is here too as he reaches in and just lifts the, the stick and it was the reaction of Perry there as he kind of comes up but didn't seem like much because that stick got horizontal on a scoring chance. And I'm the power play. It is their third power play. Perry with a shot. Maroon out in front and an opportunity capitalized on by Boyd Gordon as he sends it down the ice and takes a glance at the clock. 142 left to go in the power play. Sammy Bachman with speed across the blue line. Dishes to Patrick Maroon. Maroon plays it back to Getzlaff. Getzlaff moves in. Bouncing back in front for Perry between his legs, but Scrivens had the answer. Oh, great, great shot through the legs there by Corey Perry to get that thrown for Ben Scrivens. Again, has to deny him on the doorstep. Getzlaff for Maroon. Maroon plays it back to the point. Bachman waiting for it. Bachman. Hendricks fronting him, gives it to Getzlaff. Getzlaff slowly in, back to Bachman, snaps the shot, Maroon the screen, but Scrivens the save. With it now, Bachman dishes off to Getzlaff. Getzlaff, back to Bachman. Bachman, Perry faked the one-timer. Petrie watching him as he plays it back to Bachman. 52 seconds of power play time remaining. Bachman, slap pass over for Perry, it was too hard, and it comes right to Matt Hendricks. He'll send it the length of the ice. Killer right up quickly to gets left. Gets left, hanging on to it. Right in front for Perry. Couldn't deflect that puck. Batman at the point. Gets left with it now. Gets left. Snaps the shot. Scrivens the save. Maroon a chance denied by Scrivens. 28 seconds of power play time remaining. Gets left again. Back to the point. Batman snaps the shot through traffic right up in the air and it's steered up and snapped into the netting. And that faceoff is coming. Outside the line. And Jeff Petrie now is going to the box for a delay of game as he swung his stick and sent that puck into the netting. And that was just a reaction. I think he thought it was going to drop and go in the net. Obviously, his dad, Dan, a great baseball player, played some ball in his early days. A little hand-eye coordination there from Jeff Petrie. But it was a reaction-style play. He had to get it out of harm's way, whacked it out of the 
front of the net, then it goes over the glass, unfortunately for him. So a lengthy five on three here, which he develops, I guess, coming in here with 21 seconds. That's a lot of time in overtime. And the Oilers have taken their time out now. The Fifty shots fired by the Ducks at Ben Scrivens. 47 saves. And a huge faceoff coming up for their number one faceoff man, Boyd Gordon. And something you often don't see in overtime, yeah. Louis, is five players on the ice. Well, they have to. You can't have less than three players represent you on the ice, and that's what happens when there's two men. Penalty taken. 21 seconds still on the clock to the Andrew Ference call. So with Petrie going for the full two, they'll have to bring another body out on the ice. Take it a five on three, each of them do. It is Marincin, Gordon, and Hendricks. Boyd Gordon. 57% in the face-off circle. He is ranked sixth in the league. A huge face-off against Matthew Perot. From the draw. Kept in for Getzlaff at the point. He'll give it to Lindholm, get it right back again. And with Lindholm, moves in, fires a shot, deflected high. And that one. Goes into the netting, the faceoff will stay in the attacking zone for the Ducks. That was a zinger by the 20-year-old ticket, sixth overall in last year's draft. He's going to head off. Batman comes right back out. Moreau and Gordon will go at it one more time. Down to 11 seconds in the penalty to Ferrance. Moreau wins that draw, but they didn't drop it fairly. Once again, Boyd Gordon against Perot and another conversation over at the penalty bench. Ten seconds showing on the clock. They put it back to 11 for Ferrets and 150 for Jeff Petrie. Perot and Gordon from the draw. Scrivens will play it himself into the corner. It goes. Hendricks is there and he'll send it down the ice. What a play by Scrivens. A little delay, too. Perry brings it back in. Perry drops it back for Bonino. Nick Bonino throws it towards it. Scrivens, the save. Oh, what a chance as it goes over top of the net. Scrivens has got Corey Perry in his face. The puck comes back to the point. And a tripping penalty coming. Matthew Perot with his palms in the air, but he's going to the penalty box with 2.21 left to go in overtime as he took down Boyd Gordon. Just a big battle in front. Boy, that puck was really bouncing around and amazing how it stayed. Right here as Perot just denies Gordon from going through. Definitely moves a little bit into him, takes him down the back referee. Sees it the whole way and <laughs> Bruce Boudreau doesn't like it. 2.39, the time of the tripping penalty for Perot, who tied the game at 15.30 of the third period. A minute 21 left to go on the penalty to Petrie. And watch the play by Ben Scrivens. That is cool under pressure. Well, good job to him to stop it before it goes into the zone, but he can't play the puck. He holds on to it for a second, makes the little pass off the wall, and Hendricks clears it out of harm's way. Taylor Hall in front of the net, jamming away! Oh. Schultz at the point. Schultz will give it to Perrins. He shot through traffic. Doesn't make it. Lucas Pisa works his way to center. He'll chip it in, chase it himself. The Ducks make a change. A minute left to go in the four on four. And then the Oilers will have the opportunity. Look at Hall with Schultz. Cagliano trying to keep up with him. Schultz in the front for Hall. Hiller makes the save. Not sure where it is, but he gets the whistle. Boy, I'll tell you what, that was two stallions going at it right there. Talk about Seabiscuit down the left-hand side. <laughs> Taylor Hall, Andrew Cogliano, two of the fastest guys in the league, and a great job by Taylor Hall to get the little bit lead, get cut the angle so Cogliano can't come around, kind of pitches him off. And that pass doesn't get all the way through, but oh, three fast guys with shots yeah. on the right-hand side, too. 51 shots now. Remember what the San Jose Sharks did. A couple of visits ago. Gagne at the blue line. Almost got it to Perron. It was broken up there by Getzlaff. 
40 seconds left to go in four on four. Gets left. Brings it in himself. Goes between the legs for Batman. Batman. Gagne prevented the shot from getting through. David Perron now. Perron. With Schultz catching up. Perron against Boschevan. Just inside the blue line. Throws it in behind the net. Miller will stop it. Time winding down in the penalty to Jeff Petrie. 15 seconds of four on four. Ferris off the bench. Moving in. Ferris wide. Marvin Johnny scores! Andrew Ferris. Overtime winner. With a minute nine left in overtime. The captain wins it for Edmonton. And what a shot. He just came in and absolutely blew this one by Hiller. All smiles after this one here. Edmonton was the better team, especially once it went to three on three. It was wide open hockey, couple great chances. Off the bench, picks it up, stops, tees it up, and just drills it. Top shelf past Hiller for a 4-3 overtime win. Just his third goal of the season and first goal in 43 games for Andrew Ferentz. And oh yeah, it's his first career goal against the Anaheim Ducks. Diane Heffernan of Fort McMurray swiped the free, free club card to be out of Safeway and Kellogg cereal. You have won a DVD prize pack from E1 on the overtime game-winning goal by the captain, Andrew Ferris. 4-3 the final as the Oilers win their first game in this season series.